Hey, welcome to Backyard Bows. I'm Brandon, and today is monumental for me and Backyard Bows. This is the first of like kind of the major big bow brands that has acknowledged our process and has said, hey, we want to send you a bow. We'd love for you to review something. We think that you will like it. And we have the Mach 30 from PSC. I can't believe it. Uh, that to me was like a milestone for us just to get a little bit of recognition because I, I love the process we do. I think it's very thorough. I think it's very honest. I think that's why you guys watch it. And yeah, so so here we are. We have the Mach 30. If you if you followed along from the past, or if you haven't watched it yet, go watch the Mach 34. That was one of my favorite bows that we have had in here to date. If we did a top five from the entire time we've started, which maybe one day we will, the Mach 34 will be in there. It just was, it was an awesome bow to shoot. I loved it. And, and they're very, they're an acquired taste, okay? So they're a little bit unique looking. All of those carbons from PSC over the past couple of years, they've all had a similar shape, but it's kind of a, it's, it's a very unique bow and, and they've grown on me more and more. So something that I like about these bows is they have a solid riser, which I like it for two reasons. One, I think it produces a very nice, stiff carbon bow. I also love the camo patterns on these bows because there's no breakup in them. Right here, we have the Cryptic Skyfall, which I love that we've gotten here because I've seen all the other ones. The Kuyu is awesome on these. The bottom land is super slick. All of their abilities to mix and match colors, limbs. I love every camo pattern on these bows. And this Cryptek Skyfall is pretty sweet. I thought it would be a little bit more wider, which is not necessarily my style, but it actually has a lot of black in there, a lot of yellow. I think it kind of looks and reminds me of kind of that knockdown late season cornfield with a little bit of snow on it. Um, but it's beautiful. Something else that has been one of my favorite visuals um, for, for appeal this year has been these copper brass looking hardware that they've added on some of the bows. I know, I think Matthew's done it as well, but PSE's is the slickest. I love the all black with the copper or the brass hardware on the cams limb pocket. Absolutely beautiful. Probably one of my favorite solid bows of the year. So you got a six inch brace height, 30 inches axle to axle, really nice and compact. I think this is gonna be an absolutely beautiful whitetail hunting um, for those blind, those tight blind scenarios, climbing in a tree stand, any tight spot. This thing is just awesome, lightweight, easy to pack in. The performance thing is what we're gonna test outside with that freestyle shoot, but right off of the bat, I love the look and shape of this. I think com compacting that carbon too has made for a little bit stiffer. Um, riser. I love the new shape of it, the widening at the top and bottom. I think this is one of the best looking ones that they've come out with. But it comes in at 3.6 pounds, 338 on the IBO. This cam system goes from 24 and a half out to 31. This is the EC2 cams. I'll touch on that a little bit more in just a second. You have 50, 60, 70, and 80 pound limb option. You got 10 uh, limb bolt turns in there. So you got a nice fluctuation of draw weight. But the EC2 cams also have three let off positions at 80, 85, or 90. Something to note, I think it gets looked past more than it should, and it doesn't get as much credit as it should, is the ability to change the engine on bows at PSE. So any cam that ends in a two will fit to this. It has a different draw length. It has a different feel. Some are smoother than others. Some will get different speeds. It's awesome. So the best thing I can compare it to is if you have a car, and you're gonna put a different size engine in there. Again, the car will feel different. It will be, some will drive smoother than others. Some will be faster, some will be more powerful. Um, and the ability to change a cam out and have so many different options that are gonna fit you, I think that is something that I haven't even myself given enough credit in the past. And then after a couple years of doing this, I realized, man, that is one of the coolest features that you can offer somebody is changing up the engine on the same bow. The EC2 cams to me, as you guys know, these are some of my favorite cams. When they are able to reach my draw length of 30, so sometimes they haven't, and I've had to go with those E2 cams, but these are my favorite. I think they're the smoothest. They get some really nice speeds, not the fastest. I'm comfort over speed anyway. You have some really nice solid limb pockets. Again, they have that board out hole in the middle with a pin kind of anchoring that limb from moving right above it. We have our kind of short stop stabilizers that we've talked about. You can lower your stabilizer in a lower position, rock just the short stop, do both, whatever you want, mix and match, get that feel for you. And if you go up to the middle of the riser, right on the grip, it has an option for you to add. I think it's a knock on grip, but it's an, a grip that'll kind of allow you to change the angle of your bow, like make less contact with your bow. And then if you go to the back side, you have multiple options for your sight being either mounted on the side with four different holes or you have that picatinny rail on the front you have your integrated rest spot on the back and then look at this cable guard 
this is awesome. This is when I was at the ATA show. This is the first thing that caught my eye besides the camo was this quiver. It's the lightest quiver on the market. The actual bottom part of the quiver, the arrow grippers, it is mounted directly onto the cable guard, which cuts down on a lot of weight. I think at the beginning, I, I questioned that being mounted on the cable, which we'll see here when we shoot it. But supposedly, it I mean, it has no effect on the feel of the bow, the shot cycle, none of it. Or then you have the quiver top mounted. And man, it's super sleek. I love it. I, I think that's one of my favorite quivers. I, I, that's just, that's one of the coolest things. It's, it's another one of those things where you think about it and you're like, why hasn't anybody thought of this ex until right now? You have the dampening system that goes in between each limb. But supposedly this is one of the most vibration free carbons that they've ever produced. I believe it just because of the shorter, more compact riser, it being a little bit stiffer. I have a feeling this thing is gonna be a breeze to shoot. I also love the 338 on the IBO. I think this thing is a perfect, like I said, perfect. Uh, I just keep imagining myself using my climber stand, hiking far in, you know, climbing up tight spots, little accessibility to do some pre-trimming. Uh, you always find yourself in these positions where like, man, a really nice compact bow um, in some really funny angled spots is perfect. This thing is money, got everything there. Uh, and the quiver is so tied up against there, even, and it's no, I know it's not loaded up with arrows, but it really doesn't have much offset to the bow, which is cool. I got this Tetra Max on there, mounted onto the Picatinny rail. I got a quad rest. I got that shrewd stabilizer. This thing is, this is awesome. I'm excited about this one. So we'll go single shot assessment. Oh man. And so one thing I will say, I noticed that the HA show is 30 inches on this. It seems a little bit short, but this is what I'm getting. This is what I'm getting to, the, you know, this is the max draw length on this. So if it feels a little short at 30, there's nothing really you can do about it. So I have it on 80% let off because I think that's what feels best for this draw cycle. If I moved it to 90, I think I'd get a little wiggle room on that draw length. But uh, this right here feels awesome. This draw, this draw cycle is super smooth, not a lot of effort goes into it. I mean, you feel like you're pulling like 60, 65 pounds, which I love. I think if it's in those 280s with that pull, to me, that's an awesome ratio for that draw cycle and some speeds. I mean, this thing, it sets up really nice for a nice shorter compact bow. That full draw stability technology that they talk about, I, <laughs> which I've asked about, I don't know, I'm not, I, it's like one of those things where I can't assess on it too hard, but I've asked like several times, what is it? There's never really been a confirmed answer on like the exact technology. I, I pretty much, it, it, the way it was described is that the cams are kind of moved a little bit back kind of offsetting the center of gravity of the bow, kind of making it more stable at full draw. I, I'm, I'm gonna butcher that. But it does feel really good at full draw, especially for a compact bow. This one, I'll tell you what, and you guys know how I feel about that RX-7 and 8. This one's gonna give it a run for its money. Little bit of vibration in your hand, can't wait to run it on the decibel meter, but it feels really good. The shot cycle is super clean. The draw cycle is, is, is butter. Um, Let's go. Let's go shoot. You guys know how we're going to do. We're going to freestyle the shit out of this thing all day. Uh, and then we'll sit down and give it that grade tonight. So we'll do uh, our freestyle shoot. This is one of those moments where you just... Spring's finally here. I like winter when I'm hunting. And then right when hunting season ends, I can't stand it. So um, the weather is changing. I love this time of year, especially doing these reviews. So we'll start up here. I like to mention we, we built a deck. We have a box that we elevated ourselves up for. These give us those downward angle shots. I put a couple deers down there because that's mostly what I'm shooting at and a hog. So again, when we do our whole setup of our 3D targets and we'll put out a little video on it, we kind of place everything purposefully um, so that we're visually getting what we're hunting constantly. But we'll start with a boar at 25. And then we got two bucks at 30, which is kind of what I set myself up for in the field. Like if I'm setting up a tree stand off a trail, I'll go 30 yards, which will give me a lot of cover, you know, and it gives you a little bit of concealment. And that 30 yard shot to me is just money. Uh, 20 and under, that's when I, you know, that's kind of like what I stay away from. I like a little bit more room for myself. Uh, so I set them up at 30, one quarter into me, one quarter and away from me. I don't know why, and this is where we all go wrong. We all anticipate something differently. We assume something. I assumed that this was gonna be a really aggressive bow. 
I looked at it, I saw a picture of it, and immediately I thought something. And that's why we do this, because this is the complete opposite of what I first um, assumed about it. I mean, the, the draw cycle is awesome. The hold on this is awesome too. I, I'm, I'll tell you right now, and I always do premature assessments. That's that exploding heart shot. This is gonna give the RX-6, I mean the RX-7, the RX-8, kind of those goat carbons that I've been talking about, a run for its money. The hold on this is incredible. The draw cycle is so smooth. I wish it went out to 30 and a half because I think that would fit me a little better because it's a hair short. Even at a, the, the slightest amount of that draw length being off, it's still rock solid. I love the way this thing holds. When you're drawing it back, you just immediately visualize yourself in a tree stand, small platform. Again, those, those trees can get to blowing. You're kind of offset and off balance. Like this thing would be such a breeze to pull back. Let's go, let's go to the gazebo and we'll shoot a whole bunch more. So I wanted to hunt with the Mach 34. It was a little bit big for me, as I mentioned. I just like that compact. This, I want one of these. I wanna put one of these in the field next year. I would say this is just a perfect white tail hunting bow that you can dress in any way you which want without having to sacrifice anywhere because of weight, starting out real nice and light being a carbon. It gets an incredible feel in the hand for a carbon. Um, it's also what I'm assuming to be very quiet. It sounds very quiet and the decibel reader will be the true tell of that, but sometimes you can tell. And then the draw cycle is perfect for a really uncomfortable position. And I think it's gonna be right there under 280. If it gets anywhere close to 280, I'll be happy. But this is a white tail tree stand dream bow. We'll go turkey. And then I'm telling you, I can hear them turkeys gobbling right now. We got a couple more weeks. We'll be getting after them turkeys. We'll, we'll climb this 3D ladder. So we have a turkey at 20, all the way up to an elk at 50. The new target from Reinhardt came in today. It's out front in a massive box. I'm gonna get that thing set up on the hill and then we'll do that video kind of breaking down our targets, why we use them, what we choose, how we set up our course. It'll be a cool little video too. So we'll go coyote, which is at 25. I can't compare it to yet just because the Mach 34 was so perfect for me, but this thing sets up perfectly. The pins never float, okay? Which is, you, you just place it where you want it to go. You're not countering, which is awesome. So now we got a deer at 30. You know, you know what I also love? When something's advertised correctly. How often does that happen? You're sitting there reading the description of a bow on a website and you're like, yeah, that's the 10th one of those I read today. Everyone claims the exact same fucking thing. Advertised to a T. You know what else I noticed? The bubble doesn't want to float. For all of you who are out there gonna comment and say that I'm, I'm getting paid to do this, I'm not, okay? Uh, <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I wish I was, maybe someday, but no, I'm not. This thing just is, uh, this is money. So again, five yard increments, we were just at the 35 wolf, now we'll go 40 on that black bear, and then we'll do a full draw stall. These are the first shots I've placed on this range. I actually dialed it in to 25. And you have some pins on here that I just assumed were, were close. I could kind of tell. I mean, I mean, this is... And I'll tell you what, this quiver's on here too, which I'm not usually used to shooting with a quiver on, but it just, it sits perfect, man. It sits perfect. I forgot the quiver was even on there. Something else I forgot to mention inside, they got these snap shims, which I also didn't give a ton of credit to the first time they came out on the Fortis but I think it's something that I should. I, I, I like that too, not having to take out the axle. You can just kind of switch some shims up real easily. Uh, I think that's a cool addition too. And I think that started with the Fortis. Um, but their cam mod shim kit, it, it's up there. I mean, it, it's, it's a great option. And you have multiple options of cams, that whole switching up the engine, really cool. Um, you gotta give credit where credit's due and I, and I think they deserve it in that, in that realm, so. Um, that's good. We'll go our full draw stall, 60 seconds, little black bear. I think the only thing I'll say that wasn't like it being a little short of a draw, my arm being bent that way, that was, you know, that's kind of uncomfortable to hold it in that position. Didn't feel one bit of rollover in cams. And I could have, I could have held it for another 30 easy. Let's, uh, let's do our bonus shot and we'll get up to that elk. So just from fetching the marrows, I think I made up my mind. I just added the Alpha X. And then I've had my V3X that I haven't let go set up. I got the Expedition X Lite 31. I think I might have to add this one just to my personal 
you know, set it up, dial it in, pick out my arrow and kind of get it all set up where I could like use it on a fly if I needed to. But I think if I went with this, I'd go with the black with the brass copper cams and hardware, which is, I'm telling you, it's saucy. And that would really be a perfect blind, blind bow, which I catch myself in occasionally. So especially during turkey season. So let's go uh, bonus buck, 45. I'm so excited to rearrange this course too. So I think once we get that new, it's a big horn ram, but the big full size one, I'm gonna put that up, replace that elk. I'm gonna bring the elk down. We're gonna shuffle some stuff around. I like the bears where they're at at 40. I love shooting the full draw stall on that Paddington, but we'll move a couple of the other ones around. That uh, feeding broadhead buck is almost disintegrated. So we might replace that one, but let's go elk at 50. I love doing this. That's all I can say. I absolutely love doing this. This, is, this whole process is special to me. Uh, I love just bows, the history of bows, the origin, where they came from, everything. I feel like uh, it's such a cool tool. But this, this, this is just, this is so, this is an awesome bow. I love their decision making, going down in the axle axle size, redesigning the riser. Really cool, really cool. shoot one more I got a chicken creeping over there we'll do a quick 50 I'm pulling this thing a little there we go Just kind of make a little adjustments it's awesome uh, I, I, I can't wait to get inside and see what it gets. I think it's going to be I would love to see it hit 280 but I have this feeling just with those 50 yard arcs that I'm seeing it's gonna get mid 270s, uh, which is fine. Again, if it gets anywhere even close to there. And I'll mention that too, like every bow that we do, speed and sound, most of them get 90 decimals in our reader. Occasionally we get one that's really quiet, get one that's really loud. Most bows are in 275 to 285. I, I mean, I mean you, we'll go back and watch my videos or just look at the chart I have in there. 80% of the bows we reviewed are in that range at a 500 grain arrow. Occasionally you get one that's really strong, really fast and then you get occasionally one that's really slow most of them though the majority of bows that you're going to buy on the market today no matter what the ibo says are going to get somewhere between 270 and 285 let's say with a 500 grain arrow at my draw length and draw weight but they're going to be similar uh, so let's do those last two tests and we'll give it a grade all right so we'll do our three arrow test uh again we after even shooting i mean as much as i have today i i i feel like i'm I'm fresh. This thing has been, this thing is a breeze to shoot. Uh, let's go, we'll go our 300 spine full metal jacket. This thing comes in right, right around 500 grains. Okay, this is the one that we're gonna do, use for the grading test. I talk about it all the time, but this arrow to me is the truth seeker. Okay, this thing is gonna tell you everything you wanna know about your bow and that weight is just perfect. Okay, um, so that's why I kinda use it for the grading part. But here we go, 30 inches, 70 pounds, that's 277. I'd love to give it an eight out of 10, but man, that is perfect to me. It's close enough to 280 that that's like, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so I love the grade at the end. I always, I'm always rooting for bows. I want them to get this higher score, but in the end, it's like, that's perfect. That's what we want. 277, and who knows, this thing could climb a little. Let's try to get one right there in the middle. 279. I'm gonna, this is one of those where I'm gonna keep shooting just because I want it to get 280 so bad. Um, even if it doesn't get the grade and the average, if it gets into that 280, that's awesome. 273, so, okay, so we're gonna go seven out of 10. Now let's do a little bit of arrow weight variation. We have a 400 spine full metal jacket. This one comes in at 440. This is actually closer to what I'm gonna be using for this next hunting season. Um, so I just set up some arrows, some rip TKOs, 250 spines for this new um, bow that I got in 80 pounds, but this is gonna be closer to what I'm gonna be using in this next season. I kind of went back down in weight. That's 303, that is awesome. That's what you wanna see is like a, a bow that kind of keeps its strength, you drop that weight down, it's humming, I mean, that's an awesome speed 
for that arrow grain. And here we go, 560 grains. 262, I was gonna say 263. So that's awesome. Let's flip it around, we'll get a sound test, which like I've mentioned all day, this thing is really, really just, it's just a soft sounding bow, not much to it. I always make my guesses and the decibel reader always, it's kind of the one thing I'm kind of hit or miss on, but I think this is gonna be a little bit softer sounding. Okay, we got our phone reader here. We're gonna do three shots. I've been anticipating this being nice and quiet. Our average, 84 to 95. Most of them, and I'll tell you most of them, 80% have landed right there in about 90, 90. 87.4, man, I love that. That's an awesome read. I think it's very accurate. I have said it all day. I think this is just a really nice, quiet sounding carbon. Uh, very different from the Hoyts from this year and last. That one's at 90. Let's do one more. 89, that's awesome. So under the average, nice and quiet. Uh, I, I, this isn't like a fucking science experience. I don't know how accurate this is, but I think comparatively, from what we assume outside to what we get in here, it's it's very similar. So like I, I felt all day, this is really quiet. Uh, just surprisingly quiet. And uh, sure enough, it is right there below the average, not the quietest bow we've gotten here, but man, that was really nice to see. But moments, I knew exactly where I was gonna go with this grade. I just needed to do some of those final tests. I'm gonna start off by saying this, if you have not watched the Levitate Carbon Review by PSE, do it, okay? That is a clear, depiction of how we assess and judge each bow individually. If you were to watch that, you'd be like, man, he, he might've not, he, that bow just was not for me. But again, it had a different set of cams on it, different engine, different feel. It all factors into how the bow will feel. But I'd mentioned something in that video is that you should not write off any company just because you don't like one bow from them. I hear these guys say it all the time, like I'll never buy a bow from them again. You're just limiting yourself. I feel like that's just such a stupid mindset to get into is like if you get wronged one time or have one bad customer service experience or something goes wrong on one bow, you'll never buy a bow from them again. I'm telling you right now, completely turn the thing around, have come out with some awesome bows from the past year. This year, three amazing bows for a good price point. What if you said you never were gonna buy them for some reason or another? I mean, it's just, it's not a good mindset to get in. Look at Brody Turner, okay? This, this uh, competition shooter, wins all these awards. I mean, kid's young. I love his mindset. He's not gonna sign with anybody. He shoots whatever bow he's most consistent with, which fits him the best, what he enjoys shooting that year. He's not just gonna sign with one company and shoot whatever they hand him. That's awesome. That's where I wanna remain as a hunter. Let me try some different bows each year. I'm gonna find one that suits me best, um, and I'm gonna go with it for that year, for that season, maybe a couple, you know, that season. Uh, and, and I'm one of those people too, like where I'm a diehard loyal fan, you know, like I drove Chevys until they fucked me and then probably never buy one again. I, I, I switched over to, to Dodge, you know, and I'll do that with different things, but with Bose, for some reason, I've kept this open mind and I think it's benefited me tremendously. Cause look at the here, I just, and, and this is, this is, this is one of my favorite, hands down. One of my favorite carbons, probably of all time. You just, there's nothing bad about this bow. I love the EC2 cams. They have different cam options for you, which we'll talk about in a second when we get to the technology part. So you can mix and match and feel what feels best to you. These EC2 cams, once again, are my bread and butter. I love them. So, uh, and I think they're probably one of the most popular ones at PSE. So we'll go with the grade. Okay, so immediately, right there where I wanted to see, 277 out of 10, I wish I would've gave it an eight out of a 10, but that's fine. It was close enough that that to me is just a, a, a very nice speed with that 500 grain arrow, 30 inch draw, 70 pounds, 277, I think it maxed out. Quality, 10 out of 10. I absolutely love the quality on these. Carbons to me, that's just top tier quality, dependability, uh, durability. These things are just as solid as you can get, you know, and, and, they're, and they're made for those rugged conditions and you're gonna get your money's worth and that's what you're investing in something that you can pack into a horrible condition, a rugged condition, and it be light on your pack and take a beating. 
Appeal, I gave it a 9 out of a 10. It was close to getting that 10 out of a 10. I love the way this thing looks. I love the camo patterns splashed onto this solid riser. I love all their camo patterns. Kuyu, Bottomland, this Cryptek one. They're all really sleek. The black with the copper, I think, is probably one of my favorite options of the year. Absolutely beautiful bow. Uh, and then you go to technology. I gave it an 8. And, and I, you know, I'll admit where I was wrong, you know, and I think I kind of gave a little bit lower grade to maybe the Fortis or one of those other ones where I think it could have got a little bit higher. And I think that to me, that goes into the, that cam, the interchangeable cam system, the snap shims, uh, the different engine options. I think it's overlooked. I think it's underrated. I think it's an awesome feature for these bows. Again, any cam with a two on the end will fit this bow, giving you a different feel, different draw lengths, different speeds. Really cool. Okay, love that. Performance, easily nine out of 10. Almost gave it a 9.5. I mean, absolutely a breeze to shoot. Once again, with the, the, with the mocks, from the first shot to the last shot, I felt comfortable, consistent, and most importantly, confident. Again, sometimes a bow will make you feel like a good shooter. You know what I mean? It's just, you just pick it up, you start slinging them, and you're like, wow, uh, this thing's doing the work for me. Um, balance really well, very steady. The bubble, little torque. Um, the pins, almost no floating. Awesome feel in the hand. As smooth as you can get on the draw, I could go on and on. Uh, and you know me, I don't usually carry on like this, but this one, this is a good one. This is one that I'm gonna do my very best to get my hands on, throw it in my mix. Um, this one's worth keeping. So, uh, and then also one of my fa other favorite things is this new quiver, so cool. Uh, lightest quiver on the market, attaches right to the bow and the cable guard, sleek. I mean, this thing is just really cool design. Love what they did here. Can't wait to see the other two aluminums that they did from this year. So don't buy a bow off a single bow review. You've heard me say it over and over again. Get into a shop, shoot different ones. Like I told you in the very beginning, I thought this felt was gonna feel a certain way. I thought it might be a little bit more aggressive and it blew my mind, it was the complete opposite. So no matter what I say, no matter what you watch in another video, get into a shop and shoot them for yourselves. Your draw length, your specs, your draw weight, all of that might change the feel of the bow, the different cam options. So keep that in mind too, when you're in a shop, Try to realize that the cam options that come on these bows, you know, you might be shooting the E2 cam and you might pick up the Mach 30 and be like, ah, oh, that, that wasn't for me. And then all of a sudden, you know, if you were to shot the EC2 cams, you would have loved it. I, I don't know. But make sure you realize that. Depending on what they have on the bow in the shop, that might depict how that bow feels as well, which is something to really keep in mind when you're shooting these PSEs. What, what cam do they have on it on the one that you're test shooting? But shoot a whole bunch of different bows. I think one will always stand out to you. Okay, uh, one will feel a little bit more comfortable, which transitions into consistency, confidence, all of that. Uh, I, I just, don't just buy something because I gave it a good review or your cousin told you it's what he shot his whole life, especially if you're new to bow hunting or archery. And then above all else, no matter what you're shooting, what your setup is, make sure you get those reps in on the daily. We'll see you next time.